In our sticky tape lab, you looked at the exploration question, how do charged objects and uncharged objects interact? For that, you had two different types of charged sticky tape. You had some aluminum foil and some paper, and you basically got a list or a table of all the different types of electric interactions or non-interactions between each of those pairs. So did they attract? Did they repel? Was there no discernible attraction or repulsion? And so uh, in this video, I'm going to kind of talk about some of the general rules you should have been able to decipher and figure out based on your observations and the data you collected. So when we look at general rules, all of your interactions should have fallen under one of these four categories. Number one, the same types of charge repel. <clears throat> if you had a top tape and a top tape, or a bottom tape and a bottom tape, they should have repelled one another. Number two, opposite charges attract, or things that have different types of electric charge attract one another. So the top tape and the bottom tape, or the bottom tape and the top tape, they should have attracted to one another. Number three, both charged objects, or all charged objects, in our case the top tape and the bottom tape, should have attracted all of the quote uncharged or neutral objects. The two neutral or uncharged objects we had was the paper and the foil. And each of those things should have been attracted to either the top tape or the bottom tape. And let's think about what does that actually imply about us? You remember one of our tests to find out whether or not the tape was quote charged or not is whether it was attracted to us. And that was true for the top tape and the bottom tape. So if the top tape or the bottom tape both of them are attracted to our body or your hand next to it. What does that imply about our charge state? Well, that must mean that we're essentially electrically neutral like a piece of paper or foil. And then the last interaction or general rule should be that neutral objects or uncharged objects do not attract or repel one another electrically, right? So the paper and paper, paper and foil, foil and foil, all of those should have shown no discernible um, electric attraction or repulsion. So now that we have this, um, before we can kind of put it all together, we need to figure out the charge identity of each of the tapes. So the top tape and the bottom tape, we said are, have different types of electric charge. Um, and we saw that based, they, they behave differently in terms of interactions that we observed. So, when we talk about electric charge, usually we assign the you know, positive for one type of charge and negative, we call the other kind of charge negative. And so the question is, is the top tape acting like a quote positive or negative charge? And vice versa, is the bottom tape acting like a positive or negative charge? So in order to figure out the charge identity of both the top and the bottom tape, whether they're acting like a quote positive or negative charge, we need to have something of known charge identity. And so in this case, we have a, a gray plastic pipe. It's a PVC pipe, and it's given a negative charge when it's rubbed with a wool cloth. So that gray pipe has a known negative charge. And we bring that gray pipe close to our top and our bottom tape. Just observe what it does to each. You should see that the bottom tape is repelled by the gray pipe, which is negatively charged, and the top tape is attracted. So what kind of charge must be on the bottom tape or what, must, what type of charged object must the bottom tape be acting like if it's repelled from a negative charge? Well, like we said, the same type of charge on two objects repel each other. And so if the bottom tape is being repelled by that, that must mean the bottom tape is acting like a negatively charged object. And if we look at the top tape, it's attracted to our, that negative charge so it, the top tape must be acting like a positively charged object. So now we have a simple way of creating with sticky tape something of known positive charge and negative charge. And that might come in handy in our investigations and some of our demonstrations and discussions in the future. So now let's see if we can use what we know to explain why is it when you have two pieces of tape that are separated. They start out neutral and you separate them. One is acting like a positively charged object and the other one is acting like a negatively charged object. So imagine you could see the difference between the top and the bottom tapes at the atomic level, 
right, the microscopic level, on the partially separated top and bottom tapes, invent a way of representing how the tapes change as they are separated. Remember the whole step-by-step -step process to create the top tape and the bottom tape? Uh, in one of the steps, you had to like peel off the top two layers together. That's what we're seeing right here on the screen. And you had to either rub it on a piece of metal or ab above your upper lip. And when they were together, you wanted to make it so that when they were together, they acted like an uncharged or neutral object. So on the right side of the screen here, these two pieces of tape, however we kind of think about what's going on at the atomic level or microscopic scale, it needs to show that this part is uncharged or neutral. And remember when we separated those two, the one on the very top, we now know acted like a positively charged object, and the one on the bottom acted like a negatively charged object. So how can we imagine what's going on here to explain our observations? Well, let's think about what does it mean for something to be uncharged or neutral? Does that mean that the object or the right side of the tape here has no electric charges in it? Well, we know because you guys have taken chemistry that the things that have fundamentally have electric charge are subatomic particles. They're protons and electrons. Remember, protons are positively charged electrically and electrons are negatively electric, negative electric charges. And so let's think about, um, are there protons and or electrons in this tape here that together, remember, is acting uncharged? Well, of course there is, because anything that's made out of matter has a nucleus, and what's inside the nucleus? Protons and neutrons. Neutrons have no electric charge, but protons do. And so there are positive charges in the nucleus of every atom of the sticky tape. And then around that nucleus are electrons, right? And so there are electrons and protons in both the top tape and the bottom tape. But what is it that makes this act uncharged or, quote, neutral? Well, it's that there's the same number of positive and negative charges in each, right? Um, and since there's a new, you know, atoms and a nucleus and, you know, basically everywhere in the piece of tape, let's just start by drawing, just real simply, positive charges throughout because there's a nucleus in every atom um, and no matter what's going on, whether they're together or separated, there's positive charges there, right? Now, we're going to draw electrons uh, in a certain number on both the right side and the left side to try to explain why the right side is neutral and then the top tape when separated is positive and the bottom tape that when separated is negative. Uh, but we have to decide where to put those and how many of those charges. Now, let's think about protons and electrons. Protons, the positive charges in the, in the nucleus of the atom and the electrons that are orbiting around the nucleus, which of those charges you think are mobile charges, ones that actually could move if they were forced to do so for some reason, right? Protons in the middle, electrons in the outside. If there's any one of those two that's going to tr be transferred back and forth between objects, it's going to be the electrons. They're the one in the outside, right? And, and they are, you know, um, essentially sometimes in a stable state around the nucleus, but they're on the outside, they're the ones that could be kicked off or added, right? The protons inside the nucleus are really tightly bound, they're not going anywhere. And so we're gonna draw each of these pieces of tapes with the same number of positive charges, and then what's going on with the negative charges? Well, if we have the right side that's acting like an uncharged object, that must mean there's one negative for every positive, so overall it's electrically neutral. So we draw three negatives in the top tape and three negatives in the bottom tape here. And together, either piece or together, they're acting like an uncharged object. The net charge is zero because you have three positives and three negatives, right? Well, if the, the left side, when they're together, if there's three positives and three positives in the bottom, that means there has to be a total of six negative charges that were there when they're together, just like the right side here. But when we separate these things, if the top tape is acting like a positively charged object, that must mean there's more positives than negatives in the top tape, right? So let's say there's just one. 
The bottom tape, on the other hand, we found out acted like a negatively charged object. That must mean there's more negatives on that tape than there are positive. And so if there's three positives, let's draw five negatives. And um, we have to draw five negatives just to show that we knew before these two things were separated, they were neutral. So if we drew a total of six positive charges between the top tape and the bottom tape, there must have been six negative charges. And we're just showing that we think maybe there's one and five, or there could be two and four. That would still make give this a net charge of po positive net charge and this a negative net charge. But if we draw it like this, so this is one possible distribution of charges to explain microscopically what's going on with the tape to explain what we observed. Um, when we look at the top tape, we'd say that it would have a net charge of positive two, right? Because there's three positives and one negative. And the bottom tape, what's the net charge it has? Well, there's three positives and five negatives. And so add that up, you get a net charge of negative two.